uh, using the uh, component on server log analysis with Apache Flume and that would be taking data and configuring, installing Flume, configuring Flume and uh, uh, making up the proper configurations with Flume on HTTP Hotworks cluster and uh, after the data, that's the uh, data log, server log data events generations, we have built up the each catalog tables and we have checked on that uh, demo. So today we will be going through first a demo on streaming Twitter data with Hotworks HTTP cluster using Apache Flume and uh, after that, uh, we'll be showing uh, typically uh, the data uh, import-export operations using Scoop uh, from Microsoft SQL Server data into Hotworks HTTP cluster using Scoop. And it will be a simple POC uh, environment uh, that uh, the data importing, exporting uh, details that would be showing enough. And after that, we'll be going through the demo on the sentiment logs analysis. So that would be typically uh, the use case that would be emphasized on refining and visualize the sentiment data. So visualization is uh, different as on the analytics side. So we would be checking through typically how to load the Twitter data into Hotworks HTTP cluster and uh, how to start basically the, uh, uh, the Twitter's event, gen data event generations using Flume and uh, based on the data that we are uh, taking up, it's converting that so raw Twitter data into the tabular format and uh, whatever the dictionary file that would be utilizing for the sentiments of each and every tweets into positive numbers, negative numbers. So those data would be converting and storing in the format of Hive tables and that Hive table would be utilized for visualizations uh, for uh, refining sentiment data. So that could be another use case that uh, we will be covering enough and after that I will just go through some sample commands that to show that uh, how to test the HPS setup in Hortonworks cluster and uh, so that's typically we will be covering uh, too far for uh, store of scoop and flume. Uh, so let's first start with the first demo for today. So for this demo, uh, for stream Twitter data with the HTTP clusters using Flume, so what we need, first of all, we typically need a Twitter application uh, that needs to be created. So uh, first, uh, we need to go through We need to go through the uh, apps.twitter.com. So, if you go here in apps.twitter.com, uh, just by login in your Twitter ID, so you'll be able to see that some of the introductory API materials being available on Twitter apps. So, a Twitter app typically has many formats. So, if you go through in apps.twitter.com, so here. Uh, Basically, a Twitter app can have can take many forms, and uh, it could be any pieces of software that could interact with the Twitter on behalf of a user in the app. Um, so typically, you can build up uh, any sorts of uh, uh, Twitter uh, apps based on the application management. So if you want to create an app, just right click on this button in apps.twitter.com portal, just as create new app, and uh, you'd be you just need to give the following application details like uh, regarding your app name. Uh, some descriptions like application specific descriptions like user uh, specific authorization screens uh, between the specific uh, numbers of words uh, 10 to 200. I just give a website so for publicly accessible home page and uh, the callback URL is optional. You can give, you cannot give. That's uh, typically the OAuth applications we need a callback URL. So once you uh, just agree to the developer agreement just uh, then click on this create your Twitter application so you'd be able to uh, get a complete Twitter app and uh, uh, for that one is being utilized here uh, because uh, specific for the Twitter app uh, application specific keys would be utilized to collect the real-time tweets uh, from social media. So since I have already created an app, so this one is my app that's HTTP Flume app. So this app 
once I create it, uh, so I'll be able to see uh, the specific details like uh, specifically the application settings uh, like consumer key, callback URL, uh, app only authentication that could be visible. And also in, if I just go through in the, into the keys and access token tab, I'll be able to get the API key, API secret which is needed for the configuration side in the Flume and also the access tokens uh, that could be utilized to make the API request on your own accounts behalf on that. So. Oh, this is a very secret one, but since it's a public app, so I can uh, reveal that one. So access token and the secret value that I need to uh, configure in my Flume configuration as well when I'm collecting the data, that's Twitter data directly through Flume. So this only uh, the four specific details are needed for this demo. That's API key, Twitter app API key. API secret, API token, and access token secret. Only these values are being uh, needed over there. And after that, uh, we can directly go ahead and move inside the HTTP cluster. So in this cluster, we have already installed Flume. So uh, that's the Flume command, as I mentioned. That's a simple command, the yum install Flume, that would be installing H uh, Flume yeah. over HTTP. So by default, Flume would be not installed in HTTP. But uh, we need to explicitly install Flume over there. Because uh, if the results are does not come to, we need to write an event there. Which one? Anand, I think he's talking uh, on a unmuted, so I muted him. Uh, you can proceed. Okay. Guys, uh, you know, if you're not uh, using the phone, uh, can you please mute the phones? Thank you. All right. So you can proceed on that. okay, sure. So once the Flume installation has been completed, so then after that there are two commands uh, uh, that's being there. I mean, two specific jars would be there that's being needed uh, for this installation and configuration side for this uh, demo. Uh, the Flume code is being installed already in this cluster and it's ready to be used. But Flume also needs an agent that can connect to the data sources to work. So agents are in real time. They have been written in Java, and uh, you could write also your own agent based on the specific data that you are intended to collect through Flume. So there is a specific uh, jar file that's being available that's from Cloudera, um, but it could be utilized from any of the Hadoop distributions as well, like Core Apache Hadoop or uh, Hortonworks HTTP or Mapper. Any of the Hadoop distributions, the jar would be available to usage. So you can download that jar. from this link that files.cloudera.com samples flume resources snapshot.jar so this file uh, we need to download uh, specifically for building up the uh, use case and for build taking of the data directly from Twitter and uh, this jar file once it has been downloaded we need to copy this jar into this directory of uh, this following directory of HTTP it's user lib flume slash lib folder so on this note so where we have already installed flume so now that the agent code is in the place, now next we need to configure Flume to create an agent using the class in that jar. So we can do this by updating the uh, Flume con file. That's a basic configuration file for Flume. So let me go ahead um, So start the sandbox. So the Flume config uh, file that we intended to uh, get for this demo is we need to download this uh, specific Flume con file that's from Cloudera GitHub repository. So that file would be available in this location.
So this specific Flume configuration file that which is available in CDH Twitter example of GitHub repository of Cloudera, we can download that uh, Flume configuration file over there. Uh, and uh, after that, we need to make the changes in the configuration file. So this two uh, files is already downloaded in this cluster. So let me go ahead. So as you can see in this uh, user lib flume slash lib directory, uh, we have uh, specifically um, here uh, typically all the specific uh, jar files being available that which you could utilize uh, for flume specific applications and uh, other uh, application jar being there. Uh, but uh, the jar that I have mentioned, which has been needed uh, for this demo, that uh, flume sources 1.0 snapshot or jar. So this jar is also being present here. So uh, it could be available. Um, that's uh, this one here. That's Flume Sources 1.2 uh, snapshot or jar. So I have already copied that jar file uh, to the specific directory path. And uh, next one. If I go into this configuration directory of Flume. So this is the new Flume conf file which I have downloaded uh, from this uh, GitHub repository and uh, after that I have just copied it, uh, the repository, uh, that's a Flume configurations uh, from GitHub repository file, uh, just replaced with the old uh, Flume conf and uh, after that i would be able to see that uh, there are actually all the uh, default settings were being uh, there but only uh, the Twitter consumer key, consumer secret, access token, and access token secret, these specific values were missing. So there was a placeholder that's as uh, mentioned as records uh, just to give, identify the user so that uh, the user could explicitly uh, give their specific uh, app specific keys, a secret access token, and secret uh, token secret values. So that's four values uh, I have already given specific to my application. And in the next line, you'd be able to see that. Uh, uh, the Twitter agent dot sources dot Twitter keywords, which specifically is a node value that contains a comma separated list of words, which is used to select which tweets you want to add into HDFS. So there is a huge list where that is being available, because specifically in real time use cases, uh, we need to collect a huge volumes of data. So as many as number of words, uh, specific words we can utilize to collect the tweets uh, on based on the specific keywords. So here I have utilized some of the keywords like Hadoop, Big Data Analytics, Big Data Cloud, Data Science, Data Scientist, Business Intelligence, MapReduce, Data Warehouse, Mahout, HBS, NoSQL, NewSQL, Business Intelligence, Cloud Computing like this. Um, we can al also make refining and we can add new keywords, to, of course. So suppose I am just adding three keywords here so another keyword so I've added uh, just four keywords now uh, that's Hadoop, Big Data, uh, hash IoT and Hash Machine Learning and after that uh, 
in the next line uh, what I'm able to see that uh, the Twitter agent dot sings dot HDFS dot channel so uh, as I already defined uh, regarding the architecture of flume that to a flume exactly consists of uh, the, uh, the channel wise architecture that there is an agent that's called source there is a pipelining that's called channel and there is an uh, output repository that's called sync so source is typically that's uh, uh, the source air agent that is where from where we are being uh, intended to collect the data Channels is basically the pipeline that's uh, through which the data would be processed up. That's a memory channel, mem channel, and sings would be uh, the repository where the data would getting to be stored. So for Twitter agent, uh, we have here a uh, basic sync. The repository is the HDFS. And the sources, the Twitter type, uh, it could be the default uh, jar file uh, since it's from Cloud repository. So it's fine that if we could mention the default repository as com .cloud .flume .source Twitter source. Memory channel, of course, the uh, between in, in between pipeline that's a channel is a main channel and uh, in this HDFS channel that could be also that's a pipeline it would be memory channel HDFS type would be default HDFS that's a uh, default storage uh, if you check here the HDFS uh, Twitter agent dot sinks dot HDFS dot HDFS dot path I have mentioned here exactly the note path where the data is getting to be stored up so that could be that could be very much specific to your cluster uh, specific to the HDFS path that you want to uh, save the data so since um, here the IP address uh, of this cluster I have mentioned here uh, in this configurations and also I need to mention that's 8020 that is the default name node port number and I have also mentioned here that's a directory path um, under which the data would be finally getting stored so uh, typically this configuration provides a path from the name node where the tweets could be saved uh, just be sure that the user running the flume agent they can write to this HDFS file location and uh, in this demo we have utilized root user to run this agent but uh, sometimes in the production solution it could be better to use a specific user for this agent because instead of sometimes people use us here root but uh, since in production utilize as direct as a username uh, specifically for collecting the tweet and uh, uh, that could be also uh, something like for assigning uh, the user that uh, specifically the permission it needs uh, but it's fine that uh, we can make it as root or for production of course we need to make it a specific user and rest of the configuration uh, would be provided uh, it would be coming directly to the configuration con file so it would be fine that the right format could be text batch size uh, the maximum batch size could be thousand uh, roll count that could be ten thousand um, memory channel type would be memory capacity would be to, uh, uh, the maximum capacity would be ten thousand and transaction capacity would be hundred so the configuration is complete now we can start in the next step the flume agent so since we want the agent to continue to running even when you close the SSH session so it could start processing continuously to just go ahead and collect the data from Twitter so we need to start this uh, flume uh, data source processing using no hub so what I'm doing save and exit next I need to write no hub So this command we need to run. As the agent begins running, we can monitor the progress uh, by using tail command as well.
so we could be able to see that uh, HDFS has been started as a component type sync connection first has been established uh, then uh, it's now have already started receiving the status stream and uh, the data has already uh, started to write into HDFS till the meantime while the data has been reading what you can do you can open another terminal And we can just do an, an acid test to look at the files that's been collected in HDFS. So let's check the content of one file. So we are able to see that uh, vast amount of tweets has already started for being collected collections. Um, so we have uh, basically collected the raw tweets uh, in the uh, typically public tweets we have been collected uh, in this demo uh, based on the three specific keywords uh, like Hadoop, Big Data, uh, IoT and of course machine learning. So in this demo we have seen that uh, we have uh, we are now right now able to get the Twitter streams and uh, we have just taken the first step uh, just towards uh, uh, getting the streaming data uh, from social media or from any of the data source like this way we could be able to get uh, the real time data like from web blog resources uh, from uh, um, uh, sentiment data or from specifically sensors we could be able to collect the data uh, through Apache Flume. Uh, basically it, Apache Flume it's based on the architectures of streaming data and uh, with the help of the streaming data uh, we could be able to collect uh, the data and uh, store it directly into HDFS. And uh, there are more steps are there uh, to build in the production application. Typically what we do, uh, we 
now we can optimize the Java settings and memory allocations for the agents. We can manage the file sizes to optimize the queries against uh, some typical JSON files. And uh, we could be able to decide whether to query the JSON files directly or uh, transform them into a structured format more appropriate, which could be for Hive queries. So as we can see, uh, these are the specific uh, uh, data set uh, which we're able to collect. So as you can see also um, that uh, some specific tweets have been collected already uh, based on the specific keyword. So uh, if we search here specifically, so we'll be able to see that the keywords like hash IoT, uh, hash machine learning, whatever tweets are being there currently. Uh, so from enter uh, the Twitter's uh, servers, uh, this data will be available here. All right. So within a few minutes, we're able to see that more and more data that's already started to gather. So we can also check another set of data as well. And even we can identify the volumes. The volumes here that could be specified here in MBs, that uh, the amount of file that is being collected, the amount of data that is being collected in each and every chunk. So as you can see, that uh, correspond to each and every data set, uh, uh, this value that represents the size of that uh, files uh, of the data, file size of the data that is being collected. So, and it's uh, it's the size that's being denoted in MB. So, we could be able to identify that that how much gigs of data that is being collected uh, within just in few minutes after I started the processing. So, we can of course check some of the recent data. So as we can be able to uh, understand that uh, how much vast amount of data has been already started uh, to create uh, to store in HDFS. So this is how uh, we utilize the process of uh, using the real-time streaming data um, using Apache Flume. Um, we can collect the data from various data sources and uh, we can store inside HDFS, not only in HDFS, but we could be able to process the data next from HDFS into Hive and through HBase. Um, and uh, this is the process, some of this, that we could be utilized on this. So our next demo, uh, what, uh, where we would be working on the similar types of data set, that's also, that would be based on the Twitter sentiments collections. Uh, what would be utilizing for that? Uh, there are some potential usage of the sentiments data uh, for this types of social media analysis. Uh, typically, organizations, they use a sentiment analysis to understand how the public feels about something. Like, uh, if we, uh, since here in this demo, we have seen that I have searched uh, for the all the real-time tweets uh, specific uh, volumes data based on the specific keywords like IoT machine learning like this. Now, if I want to understand that what's people's sentiment about the specific keyword, um, for example, like IoT. So I, if, uh, now if I could gather uh, uh, about the, some uh, terabytes or petabytes or hexabytes of data uh, regarding for that specific keyword, um, uh, the entire uh, Twitter data, 
uh, Twitter uh, collection uh, data that I, if I could be able to gather into the HDFS and next if I could able to process it uh, in my Hadoop cluster through Hive or HBase if I could go ahead and analyze on that and uh, next if I could able to track that uh, what how the opinions cha changing over the time regarding IoT how the people sentiments is getting to be changed over the time so I could be able to analyze about IoT as a product that how how's that the target sentiment uh, segment getting understand how it's the analysis to be happening over IoT all over the world, uh, what, what about the services that people are looking forward, what are the competitions, uh, I mean I could be able to understand the entire nature of that uh, specific uh, um, uh, people's uh, understanding behaviors on that. So typically uh, from an organizational point of view and uh, so sentiments data is being also helpful to understand a product, a service, their competitors, uh, their reputations, like what uh, does the public really think about the company, uh, what is the, is the reputation is positive or negative like that. So a sentiment data is typically of course is an unstructured data even what the data we have just uh, gathered here we have streamed here from Twitter that's also a real-time unstructured data that represents specifically some opinions emotions attitudes uh, contain the sources in the social medias like uh, in the specifically Twitter media Twitter post blogs online product reviews etc so not only from as a social media we could be able to collect data from Twitter we could be able to collect data from Facebook from LinkedIn from Yelp from Instagram from any of the social media uh, we could be able to collect data like this web uh, now next demo which uh, we would be covering on the we would be download and extract some sentiment tutorial uh, data and we would be loading the Twitter data into HTTP cluster we'll be copy a high script into the sandbox and then we'll be able to run the hype script to refine the raw data right so So I have already downloaded the sentiment files uh, that uh, um, uh, that's been uh, contains of uh, some uh, some real time sample Twitter data. It's been consist of, and it was initially a zip folder. Uh, the Twitter data that is being uh, obtained here using Hortonworks Flume. So Flume it could be used as a log aggregator, collecting log data from many diverse sources, and it could be utilized to moving it to a centralized data store. So Flume is typically used to capture the Twitter stream data. Uh, so this data is also captured using Flume. And now uh, what we need to do, we need to now load this uh, Twitter data into the sandboxes. So what you could do is basically, since I have already extracted the sentiment files folder. Uh, so I need to upload some of the primitive data. So let's start you. Let's go to file browser. I need to upload the zip file. So this file is needed to upload.
Now we need to copy this uh, hive.dl.sql file into sandboxes. So what you could do, we can utilize WinCP file browser to navigate to the uh, sentiment uh, file slash hive folder. And uh, inside this, uh, upload a sentiment file slash upload uh, slash hive. So from here, uh, we could be able to upload that uh, file into the sandboxes root folder. So we can just do a simple drag and drop. So now that uh, file is being present, the hive script is present to the root folder of the sandbox. Same copy and pasting we need to do for uh, the JSON serializer deserializer. That way, JSON serializer deserializer 1.1.6 uh, hyphen snapshot jar file as well. Uh, so this one would be needed. So these two files has been transferred. Here the data is already uploaded. Next, we need to run the Hive script to refine the raw data. So in the sandbox VM, um, what you can do is typically um, in this uh, command window, we can write. Um, so here, as you can able to see, uh, this corresponding hive ql hive ddl dot sql file is present so we can write now so it would start uh, basically uh, when the script would be executed it would start a series of map reduce job uh, basically that uh, to uh, start we just need to let the script to finish running and when the fi script would finish running uh, it would show up the time taken that how much uh, it has been taken up for the hive query to executions and uh, we'd be able to proceed further So this is the following operations that you wanted to perform with the SQL file. Uh, that's hive.dl.sql. It would go ahead and create a tweets uh, table and hive external tables with tweet for tweets. And uh, then it would apply the serializer deserializer. And uh, it would go ahead and upload the data directly from user hue upload uh, from upload folder data to its row. So this data would be get uploaded. That's all the Flumes data would uh, 
just need to get updated and then uh, we are just go ahead and create a sentiment directory uh, just need to create an external hive table called dictionary uh, and of course the location would be taken directly from the data um, also uh, the another table would be created to map the time zone that's uh, called time zone underscore map uh, which could consist of the following schemas like time zone country uh, and the notes I need to also upload the data from the corresponding location after that we have performed a view that's a hive view which would help to clean up the tweets like create view tweet sample as select and uh, that would be needed and after that we have created another view uh, that uh, which would be needed from the tweets uh, sample and perform the lift auto join over there and after that we had just done a compute sentiment uh, for create view uh, as the select ID words from the tweets row and perform the lateral view uh, which could explode the sentences just being taken up the lower text uh, so two views have been created in this way uh, and also in the script we have created uh, another view called 13 uh, which could performing the uh, could analyze the positive and negative sentiments regarding the tweets and uh, uh, so we could be able to check uh, the tweet sentiments in the separate table uh, in a worsi format that's why there is being another table called tweets underscore sentiment has been stored as a worsi ID and uh, when everything just put everything back together and renumber the sentiments uh, the tweets bi table is being finally created this table would be the output hive table uh, and which is being stored as an ORC format and uh, it could be consist of uh, the sentiment details like positive when it is positive sentiment about uh, this words so it would return as two if it is neutral then it should return the value as one and if it is negative then it should return as value as zero and from the tweets cleans value, so we'd be able to perform a left outer join uh, with the tables from Twitter underscore sentiments on based on the specific IDs. Uh, if you somebody is performing uh, the analysis on that for tableaus on Excel, there is a new user defined uh, aggregator function is also being uh, given. And for an ingram went, uh, there is a context has been meant. So we have been created another Twitter three grams table, uh, which could be stored as an RC file for columnar storage in Hive. And uh, that could also consist of the data correspondingly from the another tweets uh, table. Which it, 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 this table that should be directly taking up the data from the raw tweets table. And it could be also based on the lateral view. So that's only the script has been written in this file. So this hive ddl dot script uh, it has performed uh, it should perform the following steps to refine data. First of all, it should convert uh, the raw Twitter data into a tabular format. It should use this dictionary file to score the sentiments for each and every tweet to the numbers of positive words compared to the negative uh, numbers of negative words, and then it should assign the positive, negative, or neutral sentiment value to each and every tweet. And uh, later that it should create a new table that should include the sentiment value for each and every tweet. Um,
So we need to make some couple of changes uh, in this Hive Tutorial dot SQL and uh, the JSON serializer deserializer jar file uh, because uh, that was compatible with the earlier versions of Hive uh, framework version um, 0.8 and 0.9 uh, but in the current sandbox cluster you'll be able to see that uh, the default versions of Hive that is being installed is 0 0.12 0 0.13 for HTTP 2.2 the versions of Hive is uh, typically 0 0.14 um, so if you're performing this demo uh, with this data set uh, um, that's uh, to be with uh, the version of uh, earlier versions and specifically with this JSON edit uh, serializer deserializer jar file so there could be some uh, initial issues so we need to do some configurations I will go through that what configurations need to do uh, I see okay
as it shows up the each an individual time taken uh, that's the numbers of seconds so it means that the numbers of uh, hive tables that is uh, going ahead and creating uh, with the help of the data that's volume data that we have provided into the HDFS and uh, also basically the script actually it's been performing some series of uh, steps uh, typically just first of all it's creating a couple of hive tables and uh, this hive tables actually uh, that's being storing it's being helpful to store uh, some it's just uh, go ahead and store um, some of the individual data uh, that uh, we are intended to give over there um, so it has already started the map reduce job processing so this script actually it's performing it's just converting the raw Twitter data into the tabular format and uh, it's also uh, it's used to uh, the dictionary file to store the sentiments that are dictionary hive table is also generated uh, with the script whenever it is executing so that file would help to score the sentiment of each and every tweet uh, by the numbers of positive words compared to the numbers of negative words. So at the same time in this cluster right now, whenever the tweet has been collecting, uh, another another side, uh, what I'm doing, I have just uh, prepared this Hive script and uh, uh, this Hive script is go ahead and prepare the, some of the individual Hive tables and the tweets that has been collected from the flumes, it is getting to be stored in the HDFS and parallelly the script would go ahead and create the Hive tables and uh, based on the data that, that uh, the, the amount of tweet that has been collected, so from this tweet uh, we are intended to utilize the dictionary file here first to score the sentiment of each and every tweet by the numbers of positive words compared to the numbers of negative words and then we are intended to assign a positive negative and neutral sentiment value to each and every tweet whichever has been collected through flume and after that uh, the script would automatically it would just go ahead and create a new table that should include the sentiment value for each and every tweet so once the job would be completed so we could be able to check in the hive command line uh, that there will be a new uh, uh, ultimately a new final final hive table would be created and uh, that's called uh, tweet bi and that uh, table should consist of actually uh, each and every individual tweet wide sentiments So this use case is pretty important and uh, it just helps to demonstrate the real-time use cases um, what we perform with flumes uh, after uh, collections of data we used to perform the processing of data through Hive, Pig or HBES like this way and uh, finally we used to process the result set and uh, we used to be able to do the real-time analytics like server log analytics or uh, sentiment analytics like this way. So there are a few configurations that we also need to do. Um, so if you check in this Hive DDL dot script uh, after uh, if you have downloaded uh, uh, directly from the link that would be provided, so you'd be able to see that uh, in the first line there will be given the uh, the JSON serializer deserializer uh, jar file that JSON uh, if insert a one dot one dot six snapshot jar with dependencies or jar so that jar file uh, would not be needed if you are working with the HTTP sandbox 2.x like 2.1 or 2.2 whatever uh, because in 2.x onwards uh, as a HTTP cluster it's consist of the latest versions of Hive uh, packages like either 0 0.13 0 0.14 so JSON uh, serializer deserializer that 1.1.6 snapshot jar file is not compatible with that so just remove that line which would be given here in the first line and also in this line number 34 here uh, in this tweets underscore raw table uh, you would be able to see that there is a format to be mentioned for the serializer deserializer uh, of the JSON serializer deserializer one so just remove uh, or replace that serializer deserializer value with this uh, individual value that I have mentioned that wordj dot apache dot hive dot h catalog dot data dot json sardi that only change that we need to do if we are performing this demo with this uh, sample data set and uh, the configuration file uh, 
in this HTTP cluster 2.x. So anything like 2.0 or 2.1 or 2.2, any versions. Because uh, um, that uh, uh, serializer, deserializer jar file is pretty old and it has been compatible with earlier versions of Hive. So with the latest versions of Hive, uh, serializer, deserializer, it's not compatible. So that's why uh, it should throw up uh, the errors. Uh, so this is the workaround, uh, the troubleshooting that needs to do to resolve that. And uh, finally, it should create up the new table uh, where that should be includes the sentiment value for each and every tweet. So I can go ahead and check in the hive the numbers of tables that has been created by the script. So these are the tables that has been created. That's uh, the Twitter tweets raw underscore data value, uh, tweets underscore uh, sentiment, tweets underscore simple, and tweets pi. So this is a final table uh, that should consist of actual sentiment wise uh, tweets data. And uh, also these are the uh, file uh, hive tables that would be created as uh, uh, they were implemented in this uh, DDL script, the hive DDL script. That's tweets underscore clean uh, and tweets uh, times or underscore map. So next what you can do, we can go ahead to hue and we can click on each catalog now we can check the tweets bi table and click on browse data So it should take up a bit of time to import all, every data and uh, after that we'll be able to see that uh, it should consist of the data across uh, uh, the flumes uh, that we have been collected. Uh, so all the data would be come up here in this Hive table. This is the log details of the query and this is the numbers of columns. Uh, that's tweets, uh, bi, dot id, ts, text, country and sentiments. So it should take up a bit of time uh, to load all the data into uh, this Hive table. So this is an example of what we have performed. Uh, basically, uh, we have done here um, sentiment analytics uh, using Flume and Hive. So we have, first of all, uh, we have done this uh, use case with the unstructured sentiment data, uh, which represents some of the opinions, emotions, and attitudes in the sources uh, from the Twitter data specifically. And uh, we have utilized the Twitter data we have collected through the flumes. And uh, we have utilized specifically uh, some sample jar files here, and a sample uh, DDL SQL file of the sample jar files we have uploaded into HDFS and at the same time we performed some of the configurations on the Hive DDL.SQL uh, in order to execute uh, with the latest versions of Hive and HTTP cluster and after that uh, 
we need to of course copy the uh, hive ddl.sql file and uh, the hive json serializer file um, into the root folder but uh, since it's not compatible so we can ignore that uh, json serializer that's uh, uh, 1.1.6 uh, because since it's an earlier version then after the executions of the script uh, when the execution would be completed if we check in the hive tables we'll be able to see there's a couple of hive tables have been generated um, and uh, there would be a, a last new table would be included in the sentiment uh, uh, analytics uh, hive uh, tables that should include the sentiment value for each and every tweet and uh, now if we will just look into that uh, hive table uh, through H catalog or through the sample hive query so we'll be able to see that uh, after next few minutes we'll be able to see the data would start to generate uh, to uh, come up from the flume to directly into uh, hive so this is something we used to do in real time that uh, refined sentiment data analysis and next uh, this data from the hive we can utilize for visualization as well and this is a, is a real time example of uh, utilizing streaming data with flume and hive In the next demo, uh, what we intended, uh, with the help of Scoop, uh, we want to transfer data uh, from Microsoft SQL Server uh, into uh, HDFS, that's uh, directly into HDFS Hive table. So for this transformation, uh, we need to have uh, some basic configurations, for, first of all. So I have here SQL Server 2012 version, and uh, I have already added a new user uh, that should have the SQL Server authentication permission. That's I named the user as Hadoop and I have already enabled the mixed mode authentication uh, for this RDBMS. Now I need to do some another steps uh, regarding configuring the enabled TCP IP network protocol because since I'm trying this uh, against the local installation of SQL Server chances, so there has been a good chances that the default configuration that you need to set to the shared memory network protocol. So that is a very specific to RDBMS specific uh, configuration. So ultimately at this end of the demo, uh, the data which I would have um, that I would be utilizing also the SQL Server JDBC driver and uh, with the help of the JDBC driver uh, uh, that I would be copied into the scoop library, I would be able to transfer data using scoop and the data that from my SQL Server that would be copied into the Hortonworks sandbox or Hortonworks cluster and uh, the similar process if I need to uh, try out with any other uh, enterprise RDBMS systems. So we already done this demo with, uh, with MySQL. Uh, next time intended to do with HTTP with uh, SQL Server. Similarly, we can able to perform uh, with Oracle or NETSA or Teradata. So by this end, execution of this query, what I did, I just uh, this code would return a shared memory as a net transport, and uh, I also need to go to the SQL Server Configuration Manager to disable the shared memory to make sure the TCP IP is enabled, and uh, after that we could be able to reboot the server.
while the service has been starting so simultaneously uh, next uh, once the configuration is done on the RDBMS side, on the Hotmail sandbox, uh, we need to download the SQL driver, SQL Server JDBC driver.
okay so the configuration has been done and now we can go ahead and download this driver
không Suresh, could you let me know what is our issues over there? Hello? Hello? Yeah, uh, I think uh, there is a chat window, there is a chat came up from Suresh. Uh, could you uh, please let him know that what he wants to mean that uh, pasted something in the chat window. Do you guys have any issues to understand the demos or the steps that whatever I'm performing or what? No, no, no. What, uh, what he was saying is that uh, for tomorrow as there is, uh, as you know, like there is a great match semi-final between India and Australia. Obviously, it will be a long night for us here. So if we want to watch the match, we, uh, we may not allow him for this call, uh, so early, so he's requesting, uh, he's asking if we can cancel tomorrow's class and continue on Friday. Oh, I just see. To, just for tomorrow. Okay, okay. Okay, I think that you guys are getting bored with the demos, though. that's why I just asked. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly I got surprised that maybe since I'm doing everything hands-on, so might be taking some time, uh, yeah. few yeah. times, uh, because it's everything in real time, right? And there is a, uh, I can go ahead something like a bit of theoretical, bit of hands-on, but I always, uh, since you guys are doing it specifically for certification, so I always prioritize on the hands-on side. I know you guys can go ahead with the theoretical side very well. Uh, if any helps is needed, I'm always here, but uh, the demos are pretty important. Yeah. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. If you, any of you has, so, yeah. Yeah. anytime you have, uh, you guys have any questions, any queries, any concerns, any feedbacks, so please let me know. Okay. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Uh, and one more question uh, I think, uh, yeah. Harsha wanted to ask is, uh, when, when we actually set up the Ambari server, Ambari agent on the EC2 cluster, so uh, after uh, after we shut down the EC2 machines uh, on the billing process and uh, when we wanted to re when we start restarted those servers, mm -hmm. uh, we couldn't uh, actually start all the services. Um, main node is not starting. Do you think it? Do you think it? It won't. Uh, is there something uh, wrong with the very setup or? Uh, it, it is expected behavior because we are shutting down all the ones. So. Yeah, so what is the recommended thing? Suppose you are going to shut down the server, uh, maybe if it is a cloud VM. So the thing is that uh, the services, uh, the all services, you could uh, stop at, at any time, any point of time. Suppose you have uh, spawned up, suppose, uh, 20 or 10 or 15 services at a time, and you want to shut down the VM to reduce the billing for cloud VM. So in that case, what you can do, stop all the services uh, whenever you're going to shut down. And then whenever you want to boot up the server once again, uh, after you boot it up, just go ahead and start all the services. So in that case, it would not create any issues. But if you suppose uh, your services are on, but your uh, server suddenly got um, shut down. In that case, there would be a collisions of the services because uh, most of all, all the services like name node, secondary name node, uh, yarn, all the services, they are uh, integrated with the Rails or CentOS's internal uh, OS specific services. So when the OS services are being shut down, so these services are being, I mean, this is basically a, process, a child and the thread process uh, thread related issues, right? So the child threads are typically getting okay. uh, all fan. So that's why uh, whenever you just getting and restarting the VMs, uh, booting up the VMs, that time most of the services you would be able to see that they are not running. Um, and whenever you just try to start once again, the yeah, services will uh, not get started properly. Yeah, I thought of that, uh, Anitra, and I uh, second time I shut down each and every service, then only I uh, uh, to the EC2 cluster and uh, mm. uh, actually stop the uh, VMs. Even that scenario also. Mm -hmm. Even on, in that scenario also, uh, we are facing the same issue. What is happening is like uh, mm. the uh, name node directory will have some files, right? When you huh. buy, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those files are missing. Like once I restart the uh, uh, EC2 cluster again, those names, are, uh, those files are missing. Achha, okay. When I go and check in that path, there, there, there won't be any files in that path. And uh, 
that's the reason why uh, name or not is not able to start. Oh, okay. Is there any way we hmm. we have to take any special uh, uh, storage kind of thing or uh, whatever storage uh, we are taking? Like uh, I think we are taking the default storage, right? Mm. EMS source. So yeah. So is is it related to our storage? Um. See, basically. Uh, each and every errors have the very specific conditions for those. So the thing is that, uh, of course, in that cases, we need to troubleshoot that thing. But the basic thing is that when each and every time, after shutting down the Hadoop cluster, we able to see that uh, the name node or data node services are not booting up properly. Name node services, if it is not booting up due to the missing of some files and something, so that might be the storage issues, that the files, uh, whichever was there, but after booting up the uh, server, once again, the files are being missing. So in that cases, we there are specific tools that are available. When we will be going through the modules on tool, we will be checking on that. Uh, so using that tool, monitoring tool, uh, uh, that uh, we would be able to uh, troubleshoot that specifically the cluster resources that whichever files have been missing. Uh, there is a very famous tool is available, uh, which we use for Hortonworks cluster. That's called HDFS Explorer. So HDFS Explorer, if you utilize, you'll be able to see that enter inside uh, your cluster, the name node, secondary name node, enter storage will be visible to you. So you can download the tool freely. Um, that's uh, It's from RedGet. It's free of cost. You can directly download from them. Otherwise, I can provide you the link. So the entire storage would be available to you. And if you'd be able to see that which files are missing, why it is not available, or that's the thing. Another thing is that the data node failure is a very common issue. Uh, when we are booting up uh, after server uh, restarting, we just booting no, up the head. Meta nodes are coming up properly. Okay, that's uh, fine. But is... yeah, I'm telling just a scenario because it's a very common okay. for Hadoop cluster, specifically maybe not for HTTP but for Apache Hadoop. So in that cases, what is there? Uh, I thought you might be able to see that uh, whenever I start the services in the VM, I always check inside the data node. Let me show right the directory path. So in the data node inside, uh, suppose I have name node, and inside name node, I have um, data node, and uh, there is another file that's be there, another uh, directory that's called current. So sometimes, uh, always, each and every time when you booted up the data node services or your name node is getting formatted, so inside data node, you'll be able to see some files has been created. One file would be in the GUID format, uh, that would be a GUID file. Another file would be created uh, that was called a version. So this version that's consists of actually the edit log, checkpoint informations, and this file is getting to be created each and every time whenever your data node services is being starting up and your name node is getting formatted. So uh, if the version file is not deleted properly, so in that cases, the data node services would never be start in a rebooted uh, Hadoop cluster. So in that cases, what you need to do each and every time, whenever you're booting up your uh, server or VM or cluster, so after that, whenever you, before starting the Hadoop services, uh, just go ahead and check the version file inside name node, data node, and also sometimes in the current directory also. So just check for this file, the version file is there or not. It, it would be created if the Hadoop services was running before uh, shutting down the VM. So just delete those uh, version file. Just do a simple RM. The version file will be deleted. Then always go ahead with the name node formatting. Then go ahead with the name node formatting, and then go ahead and start the uh, Hadoop services. So this is the basic procedure, and it's a very common issue that the data node is not starting up, data node is not booting up, so that's the process. If name node is not starting up, so for that purpose, first of all, we need to check, uh, go ahead in the troubleshooting step, the storage issues. Uh, this one point is correct. Uh, you can use any of the tool, any uh, good troubleshooting tools. Uh, one of them I mentioned as HDFS Explorer. HDFS Explorer is typically utilized by Hortonworks as well. Uh, it's a very common tool. So uh, you can be able to see the entire storage area, like name node, data node, um, secondary name node. So all would be visible. And with this tool, uh, not only for HDP cluster, if, it, if you have core Apache Hadoop cluster or Cloudera CDH cluster or any of the Hadoop uh, distribution uh, cluster, so any of the Hadoop clusters, you'd be able to visualize uh, the storage with this tool. And uh, there are some specific monitoring tools that they are like called uh, 
um, ganglia and a uh, uh, few of them like uh, uh, webvia. So that we'll be discussing, but that are also sometimes we used to monitor the name node uh, logs failures cases. And of course, uh, just go ahead and check the name node logs. So and the log files are very important to understand the specific uh, scenarios or issues over that. Is that answer the question? Can, can you copy that uh, into the chat? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I'll try this uh, whatever you suggested. Uh, can you copy this into the chat? Uh, which one? The link of this tool? The, the, the uh, whatever you wrote on the notepad. Okay. Got it. Thank you, Ananta. Okay, thanks. So, shall we proceed with the demo or? Uh, shall we continue on the next day? Yeah, I think uh, it's already late for us, so uh, why don't we start? Uh, why don't we continue on Friday? Okay, sure. Yeah, thank you. Sure. So before logging out, just one quick question. So when we do, uh, mm. whenever we do name on formatting, uh, all the data will be lost, right? Yeah, all the previous data would be lost. Okay. And yeah. before making, a, whenever we are doing any changes, any uh, just like as I mentioned, I was deleting the version file each and every time for data node uh, to avoid the data node startup failure. After that, of course, I need to do a name, HDFS name node format. So if you are making any troubleshooting over name node, data node, or secondary name node, just make sure after each and every steps, you need to format the name node, and then you can go ahead and start the services. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right, so I'll be providing the demo steps that I did for Flume, uh, for Twitter streaming data, and uh, for uh, the Twitter sentiment analytics with Hive and Flume. And this demo steps will be continuing on the next day, uh, on Friday. And uh, if you have any questions, any queries, you just can let me know. Yeah, sure, Anita. Thank you. Okay. Have a good night. Bye. Okay, sure. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for your time. Have a nice day.